November 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Revelation chapter 14 from the New Testament. Then I looked, and here was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him were 144,000 who had his name and his Father's name written on their foreheads. I also heard a sound coming out of heaven like the sound of many waters and like the sound of loud thunder. Now the sound I heard was like that made by harpists playing their harps, and they were singing a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one was able to learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from humanity as first fruits to God and to the Lamb, and no lie was found on their lips. They are blameless. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead, and he had an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He declared in a loud voice, Fear God! And give him glory because the hour of his judgment has arrived and worship the one who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. A second angel followed the first declaring fallen. Fallen is Babylon, the great city. She made all the nations drink of the wine of her immoral passion. A third angel followed the first two declaring in a loud voice. If anyone worships a beast in his image and takes the mark on his forehead or his hand, that person will also drink of the wine of God's anger that has been mixed undiluted in the cup of his wrath, and he will be tortured with fire and sulfur in front of the holy angels and in front of the Lamb. And the smoke from their torture will go up forever and ever, and those who worship the beast and his image will have no rest day or night, along with anyone who receives the mark of his name. This requires the steadfast endurance of the saints, those who obey God's commandments and hold to their faith in Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead, those who die in the Lord from this moment on. Yes, says the Spirit, so they can rest from their hard work, because their deeds will follow them. Then I looked, and a white cloud appeared, and seated on the white cloud was one like a son of man. He had a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple, shouting in a loud voice to the one seated on the cloud, Use your sickle and start to reap, because the time to reap has come, since the earth harvest is ripe. So the one seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Another angel, who was in charge of the fire, came from the altar and called in a loud voice to the angel who had the sharp sickle. Use your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes off the vine of the earth, because its grapes are now ripe. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and gathered the grapes from the vineyard of the earth and tossed them into the great winepress of the wrath of God. Then the winepress was stomped outside the city and blood poured out of the winepress up to the height of horses bridles for a distance of almost 200 miles. God, I love the seven blessings uh, that come in Revelation and we just got our second one. So the first one we heard before, uh, blessed is the person who reads aloud your word, who hears the word and keeps the word of God. And today we hear about something that's very timely to me. Uh, blessed are, are the dead, those who die in the Lord from this moment on, because they can rest from their hard work, because their deeds will follow them. And that thought that when you are done with whatever I need to do here on earth, and I get to go to heaven, the fact that that will be a place of rest, where all I get to do is worship and glorify you gets me so excited. Like, honestly, my fingers are tingling at the thought right now. It feels like here on, on earth, we work so hard, whether that's working for the world, meaning a job and, and family and friends and kids and entertainment and all those things. Some are good. I'm not saying that they're all, but we all have to 
do it with you in mind, of course. And then we also work really hard for the kingdom of God. Hopefully all of us do. Um, going really hard for you. And we don't do it out of frustration or because we have to. We do it just because of this amazing new heart that you gave us filled with love. And we're just so excited to tell other people about you and share that amazing grace that you've shared with us, that astounding grace you've shared with us. But it is exhausting and you do give us strength to complete those tasks. But I would say a lot of us here on earth are worn out. So just the fact that in the midst of all of this end of times, some of it a little bit scary to hear, you're like, just so you know, all of this hard work, even though I know you'll be persecuted for it, when you come to heaven with me, you will rest from all of that work, from all of your hard work. You will have peace, you will have calmness, and you will have rest. And the thought of finally not being exhausted all the time is something that I don't even know what that feels like. I deal with an autoimmune disease here on earth and one of the fabulous side effects of it is I'm exhausted all the time um, and just the the thought that once all of this is done here on earth I get a body that isn't in pain constantly isn't exhausted constantly uh, and one that gets to stand before you I mean that's truly amazing God I can't thank you enough that in the midst of teaching us what the end of times looks like and the urgency that we should all have, whether the end of times is this afternoon or thousands of years from now. But in the midst of all of this, you provide us with all these amazing, beautiful blessings of if you do this, this is the incredible blessing that you'll receive. And we receive so many blessings just by keeping your word and reading your word and telling others about your word. I can't imagine that you have more blessings plan for us beyond that. God, you are so good to us. We don't deserve this, but you are so good to us. In your wonderful son's name, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.